I think it's the 16, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you share the screen? Uh, more. Yo. How, how do I share the screen, dude? Not on that thing. On that thing. I'm, I'm not on Zoom. Oh, I thought you were on I've before. never been on Zoom. Uh, I, I can jump on Zoom. Yeah, that's what was up. Right. Are you now? Are you host? Which one's host? Uh, I'm co host. The main laptop is yeah. Alright, so disclaimer, disclaimer. Do you want to do audio? And then, Joe, what do you do to my team, fam? Oh, there it is. So, camera on this one. <laughs> Okay, are you, Ninja, you're going to run through that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, say when, Miss Harden. He's got to go to the computer first. I saw we live. Just let a few people in. But. Mm. And yeah. Risha in. So the microphone's on here, yeah? Yeah, bro. Perfect. Oh, we're good. Ready, yeah? Yep. Fire up. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, people? It is currently seven minutes past 8 p.m. UK time, Monday, the 16th of May, 2022. Second week in the physical Blockchain Sensei IRL office at Canary Wharf. Uh, public, <coughs> public service announcement. As of last Monday, um, we're happy to announce that at Blockchain Sensei, moving forward and for the foreseeable future, the game will be available for the public to pull up to in real life at our office in Canary Wharf. Um, open to the public from around 7 p.m. Monday-ish. Um, and then we'll do a pre-game, during game, and obviously have a conversation post-game. If you're interested in coming to the game in real life, DM us at blockchain.sensei on Instagram, and um, I will, uh, or one of us will sort you out on the details. Um, just before uh, we get started, we need to do a quick disclaimer. So, quick disclaimer, all our content is for education, information, and entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy, sell, hold any assets, nor place any trades. Please always do your own research. Our content is intended and should only be used for informational and entertainment purposes only. It is very important to do your own analysis. There you go, entertainment. It is very important to do your own analysis before making any investments, which should be based on your own individual circumstances. You should always take independent professional advice from a professional advisor or independently research and verify all and any information you may find on our show that you wish to rely upon, whether you wish to make an investment decision or otherwise. All investments come with risk. Please do your own research. We are not financial advisors. We do not intend to be perceived or received as financial advisors. So get it out of your head that we're financial advisors. We're not. But we do know quite a few. <laughs> so uh, if you want to speak to an actual accredited financial advisor, let us know and we can put you to one um, if you're unable to mitigate your risk. Okay, cool. That's all of that boring shizza out of the way. Uh, let's just get into the news. Um, there's not much, but there's a bit. Let me uh, go up here. Let's go up, shall we? How about down here? Bloody hell. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow the Blockchain Sensei YouTube, Instagram, um, so that you can stay up to date with all the latest announcements, news, and everything. 
go for stocks. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I wanted to touch on um, was this little factor here, that Apple is no longer the world's most valuable company. Uh, guess who is? It's now Saudi Aramco. Now, how long do we think that that's going to stay like that for? How long do we think the US government is going to be comfortable with Apple not being the number one value company in the world and for being a Saudi company? I don't know how long that's going to be. And why is that? Oh, yeah, because right now stocks are down and oil is up. So, uh, you know, it's kind of what's going to happen when you go to war with Russia. It's going to affect oil prices. And then that's going to mean that your competitors are going to be more richer than you. So everyone's kind of in bed with each other and helping each other out indirectly or directly. So we've got uh, Malai, blessed since 87, suggesting it might last for six weeks. I think it might last longer than that. Uh, beware, there is thoughts about. <laughs> there are some very, very tempting opportunities on the markets. And if you do not mitigate your risks, you will get wrecked. Just like getting the pop button, you probably <laughs> So I'm going to advise you, just like we always say when it comes to being with Fox, you can make, sure, make sure you have a stop loss. If you don't, you're gonna get wrecked. And you're gonna end up in a very traumatic situation where people will never look at you the same. So we just thought we'd put that out there. Look, this ain't for you to sound into that Luna Pooch, but you know, it might not be for you. So people just doing their thing and be like, yeah, cool. That's what's happening. That's what everyone's doing. But you know what? I'm not really that guy. Let me, or girl, let me not, or whatever gender you want to recognize yourself as. We don't want to really advise everybody to be diving into that new mess like that. But tempting, no. Yes, you got it like that. Um, so one of the things I also wanted to address is the fact that just absolutely no media outlets are talking about the fact the, the DXY, which is the, the value of the US dollar, is up. It's hella up right now. It's hit the major resistance, and I think it might just peek through it. And it's not been up there since like 2017. Oh, what was up there in 2017? What happened in 2017? Yeah, a very infamous crypto crash. Very interesting. Then also again in 2019, 2020, it was up there as well. What happened in 2020? Oh, yeah, a very infamous crypto crash. So let's see what happened. Uh, because one of the things you have to understand on a fundamental level is if the value of the US dollar goes up, it affects everything. People don't realize that if the value of the US dollar goes up, that makes it harder for all imports and exports around the globe. Like, it's now 10 times harder for China to buy things and to ship them out. It's now 10 times harder for our cousins and brothers in Aruba, in Jamaica, in India, in Indonesia, to That's buy it. things, to export things, or to import things because of the value of the dollar. So that also means that all companies that do things online, so that's if you have a subscription company like Netflix, if you have a subscription company like Zoom, guess what? For the international distribution, it's now more expensive. And if it's now more expensive in a time just after, well, during a recession and after a global pandemic, people ain't got the bread like that. So that's one of the factors that a lot of people were kind of ignoring uh, that I wanted to address. Just like the fact that a lot of people are ignoring that Ukraine creates 5% of the world's supply of, does anybody know? Type in chat if you know this one. Oh, wait. Let's see what we got. Hello, Max is coming in. Well, let's go and have a look at some info that's out there. Ukraine has the second biggest known gas reserves in Europe. 
apart from Russia's gas reserves in Asia, although largely unexploited. In terms of natural gas, the country has around 1.9 trillion cubic meters, which is an incredible amount. Picture this, it's sufficient, sufficient to stretch around the Earth several times. And guess what else they also have loads of? Interestingly, China was the largest importer of Ukrainian titanium iron ores with Russia on the second spot and Turkey ranked third. Um, and also when you find titanium, one of the other things that they're a, a big importer of is lithium. Well, what are the chances that there's loads of lithium in Ukraine? What are the chances? But yeah, I wanted to uh, just share this just because it's kind of what's happening in the markets right now is man's going to get played. This market is now for the professionals. If you are brand new to this and you're thinking you're just going to be able to just come into the space and make money like because you saw everybody making money last year, let me tell you that is not what's going to happen. You are about to get beat up. Mm -hmm. You're about to get real beat up. Um, just because right now we're entering a phase where for the institutions, they want to inflict as much psychological trauma on us as possible so that we are absolutely scared of crypto. And now, just because we've heard it from a couple of VCs and we've heard it from a couple of institutions, they're only interested in buying things with utility that are going to be here to last for the next five to 10 years. So yeah, now is the time to actually buy <laughs> actual good quality products, but guess what's going to happen? People are going to get wrecked. Um, and this is exactly what happens here, this, this, this cycle. So we're in a bear market and most people don't buy in bear market because they're like, oh no, the world's over. It's never going to recover. Even though we recovered from the Great Depression, we recovered from <laughs> the Vietnam War, we recovered from World War II, we recovered from the 2008 crisis, we recovered from the COVID day, but people seem to think that this one time we won't recover. I'm doing a big thumbs up. Um, so then what happens is you can see when the price starts dipping, people start cutting their losses. Then when it starts going back up, people then FOMO in and go, oh, no, I should have actually bought it. Let me buy it back in. Then what ends up happening, just when you think it's about to go back up, that's what it'll do. It will nuke on down. And then people will be like, no, that's it. I'm not going to get involved again. Crypto is not for me. And then guess what happens? The price will start going up. The media will start pumping about the coin going up to 100K again. And guess what happens? Everyone will pile in. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to nuke again. <laughs> And then when it's new kid, he would have been like, now it's time to buy the dip. And then this is where the real shakeouts can begin. Because right now it's time to buy the dip. But if we dip to 19K, like I think we're going to dip to, mm. probably not now, but at some point this year, people won't buy the dip. Mm -hmm. They'll be too scared. Go lower than 19K and you get to 10K Bitcoin. Please, I pray. Buy the dip, sell the rip. At that point. I can guarantee you, it won't be all over the media. Yeah. It won't be anywhere. Yeah. No one will be buying it, but the on-chain metrics will show that Bitcoin will be getting bought up by the bubble. Yeah. And it won't be by the ordinary people. And that's what happens. And then from there, people finally realize that the bear market might actually be over, and it'll pump up one more time, and then come crashing down again, just to, just to fake you out. So that's the kind of market cycle, what you should expect in this bear market uh, for the next year. If you can't handle that psychologically, then just don't cost average. That's literally the best technique, just the oldest technique. You can't go wrong. What is dollar cost average in? Just literally going, I'm putting 50 pound in every week, the same asset, that's it. Just keep it simple. So that is that. Um, so thank you to everyone that's uh, attended today. Please do us a massive favor before we carry on, because we've got some special guests in the building. Uh, can we all go onto the YouTube? You just go onto YouTube right now and go onto YouTube Live. Please just put type game in chat on the YouTube. So just go to your YouTube, search Blockchain Sensei. Yeah. It will come up, and then this will be a live stream. Just type game in the chat on our YouTube Live. <laughs> Okay, so we've got some special guests in the building today. Um, I think I can come and sit over here now. Yeah, can you run audio from there? Run audio from, from your phone. Not no, audio. understand. From here. 
Yeah. Yeah. You run audio from there. I'll turn on audio first. I don't know how loud it is. No, yeah, if it's loud enough from where you are, from there, it should be loud enough. From me standing like this. No, no, you sit down, bro. There's a seat for you. Is it not better from the left? The... No, because the screen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't yeah. No, what do you your Let's Yeah, I think. Okay. I can chat it's the nearest out here. Let me know. Yeah, I can't hear you guys. Yo, you guys, we can hear you guys. Barely. Your audio off. Um, I'll be ready. I'll... Yeah, I'm here, brother. All right. David, you there? That's cool. Yeah, bro. Right, cool. So, Maestro, we're going to hand over to you to introduce your team um, and what you want to show us today. All right. All right. Uh, Welcome, guys. I'm Maestro. Maybe you guys know me from NFT Fridays, but uh, I'm a day trader every day. So today I'm going to share some, let's call it some dumb way that I use to make money every day. Uh, call it my systems trading for dummies. I'm not calling anybody dumb, nothing. Don't take it personal, but I found some way how we can make money really quick. So I'm going to share this with you guys. I have some of my students today that, yeah, they're not students anymore. <laughs> They're becoming professional already. So shout out to Albi and David. <clears throat> but yes, what do we do? I've, I've made a system. It's called School of Art Knox Trading Program for Dummies. Uh, actually have a membership NFT out if you guys want to buy it or check it out. But um, what does this NFT unlock? It unlock the basic fundamentals of supply and demand. I'll teach you a, a, a really easy way so you can understand it in the program. Um, reading patterns and recognizing the charts it's pretty easy, but sometimes the program or the YouTubes, they make it so, so difficult. Um, and then I'm going to um, teach you what's the difference between Forex and stocks exchange, because people don't know that. And that's really important for you. Risk management, how you risk when you trade. And um, yeah, something that we use is a lot of um, confirmation setups. And that revolves the supply and demand, the resistance support. Um, guidelines and we use the RSI and some Fibonacci. So um, Albi, can you run it up so we can show these guys or tell them a little bit what we've been doing? Because uh, today I'm working on some other things and I'm trading live. So today one of my students is going to teach you guys a little bit what we've been doing for the past 12 weeks and how they started from nothing. And they're actually making profit every day in our trading. So run it up, Albi. All righty. Um... Let me, uh, I'll start by sharing my screen and introducing myself. My name is Albert Canoni. I'm uh, one of Maestro's students. Met Maestro uh, maybe three, four months ago now. And uh, I saw how, how much he was killing it in, in, uh, with day trading. And I, I wanted a piece. I wanted, I wanted to make money like him. And um, basically that was it. And we started and I can't believe I'm in the spot I am today. So we have a little zoom pre or a little um, presentation. I'm going to open up here. It's just the basics of our school, how we run things. And uh, we'll just, we'll go over it really quick. And then I'm going to explain, give you guys a little background on my story and what we do. And then I'm going to drop the game for you guys, how I make my setups and a cheat code, a cheat code. <laughs> Everyone can hear me and see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. This is uh, School of Hard Knocks, Maestro Golden.e. That's my boy, Maestro, my coach, my mentor, my friend. The index. So you guys are going to, if you do join, you will get a book on Forex. 
and you will learn what Forex is. Um, there's a difference between stocks, Forex, and, and crypto. The index, fundamentals of trading, trading knowledge explained in the easiest way. That's, that's basically what School of Hard Knocks is about. Uh, it's about taking out the difficulty of yeah, you look at a graph. Could you hit the play button to bring it up into full screen? Yes, bro. Thank you. Thank you. You're echoing. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Sorry. There we go. Echo, echo. I got that effect. You get me? <laughs> Is it double? Is it double like that? Is it small for you guys too? Yeah, bro. You don't you have to just open it full screen, bro. It is. I am in full screen. Oh sh oh my bad. My bad. My bad. One second. I got two screens going. That's why. Give me a sec, guys. Sorry. All right. No. Oh my gosh. Hold on, you guys. Give me a second. This double screen is really messing me up. Okay, okay, okay. We're good. We're good. There we go. All right. Now you guys can see full. Nope. Nope. No, bro. It's done the same thing, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How about now? Yeah. Can you see that? You can see it full screen, yeah? Yeah, bro. Come on. I got time. Okay, bro. okay. Okay. Index. Fundamentals of trading. Trading knowledge explained in the easiest way. We take the, the looking at a chart. You're literally looking at Chinese. You don't know what it, you don't know what it is. We break it down and make it easy. Zoom classes and meetings, uh, that's weekly. We trade in the mornings from uh, for two hours or, or an hour and a half. And then we have class later in the day around three o'clock. That's every day, Monday through Friday. We take the weekends off. NFT monthly subscription, you buy the NFT and you get a subscription to the course, live trading, um, uh, you know, teaching pretty much everything you need to, to become a successful trader. Algorithm trading, different patterns and strategy trading, being profitable and consistent. We like them shiny things. All righty. Fundamentals of trading, supply and demand. That is the most important thing in the game of trading. If you can learn supply and demand, you will become a successful trader. I cannot stress it enough. Uh, when I first started, supply and demand it's your foundation. And once you learn supply and demand, everything that you're going to learn in the future is going to pertain to that right there on the screen, supply and demand. Think of a store. If you have a lot of something, then you have a supply, bring down the price. Demand is the opposite. If you have less of something and more interest, it takes the price up due to less supply patterns, different patterns form in the charts. And we learn how to identify patterns and read the charts with understanding what is happening in the market. Tip of the day, follow smart money because retailers do not move the market. Smart money is, we can get into that later. Okay, there's the supply and demand. Supply is the red candles going down. That's the market going down. Demand are the green candles. You sell the supply, you buy the demand. You heard the saying, sell the, rip, sell the dip, buy the rip. Okay. The easiest way to explain what we do to make trading understandable is by giving you a toolbox and teaching you how to create your own tools. The toolbox is very, very important. You're not going to use every single thing you learn on your own. You're going to develop your own ways of trading. You're going to develop your own tools and that's going to go into your toolbox. Like uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned on my own, but and I, and I've applied it to what I've learned from Maestro and 
I, you start to build your own style in trading. Zoom classes or meetings will be sent with a rough schedule of times in different time zones. You know, went over the monthly NFT subscription. Um, a different approach to trading is an investing in an algorithm trading platform that trades for you where you control the funds and we control the trades. You can yep, see the brother. Uh, patterns. What's that? I said, I said we can start running the charts and show them how, how do we use the, the algo. All right. You don't want me to do this anymore? No, it's going to take a long time. I'm going to send this to Michael and then he can, the ones who are interested, they can get this um, for free. You want, me to, you want me to run some charts? Yeah, let's run some charts. Maybe do a live trading right now and use everything that we just explained from the toolbox. How do we apply it on the market? And then I'll explain to them how I do my cheat code using the algo system bot. And that's what I'm going to explain the game today. All right. We're looking at gold versus dollar. And uh, we've got a beautiful trade that just happened. My show just took profit on it. Let me get rid of this. These indicators get a naked chart. I don't see him. We're seeing you, your photo. We're not seeing the chart. Oh, oh sorry. 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 Sorry, guys. Um, my bad. My bad. There we yeah, go. guys. There basically, we... that's what we do. That's the membership. Uh, what you get, and then I'm teaching some some cheat codes that I, some millionaires trader, teach me, and now I'm teaching this for free. But uh, like I said, the setups and the the signals that's not for free. So you got to pay the membership. Day. All right, you guys. We are looking at gold versus dollar. The easiest way to look at a chart is how it flows up and down, up and down. You're going to, you're gonna, you, I mean, my sure you want me to just do like what I normally do or, or go beginner? No, oh, bro, just begin with the supply and demand. How do we see it? How do we apply it? A little bit about the smart money and then let's go do the setups. How do we get into a trade right now? Like we're doing right now. I'm waiting for you. All right. All right. This will take like right. five to ten. Supply. Demand. Supply, demand, supply, demand, supply, demand. It's that simple. Now, I'm gonna draw a. I'm gonna draw a pattern really quick for you guys to show you how we read the market. Give me a second. This is called a channel, and this is a really easy indicator of knowing what the market's gonna do. So you basically just draw a channel in between supply and demand, in between the market going up in, in these waves. And do you see how it broke the channel right here? This is a strong indication that the market's gonna go up. If it would have broke the channel on the bottom, the market's gonna go down. This is a really, really, really easy uh, and beautiful indicator. We have a a sheet with all the different patterns on, we can send you guys that sheet. It's, it's, it breaks it down, super simple. So basically, where's my arrow? If, if the market would have broke the channel on the down, it would have gone down like this. But since it broke it on the, the up, which is demand, it went up and you could have eaten all this. This is good money. This would have been, let's see here. 50 pip trade. So, Maestro, how much did you make on that trade? 480 um, euros. So, 480 euros just on this. This was 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, about 40 minutes. It's pretty good money. Yes. 40 minutes. You guys have to understand supply and demand like a house. If you can see, wait, if you wait, can... wait, wait, wait. Let me let me let me ask a question. Um, I've never actually traded gold ever before. Um, where did you get four hundred eighty dollars? Okay, Sorry. So, go ahead, my show. What, what, what did you ask, Ninja? Did, 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 didn't you just say that would have been four hundred eighty dollars? 
Bro, I made today 1,860 bucks already day trading a whole day, bro. Okay, I'm, that's that's it's, great. But I'm just going, it's I'm a leverage going back trade, to exactly yeah. what... what um, it's a leverage what trade, right? I'll show oh, you. I'll show trade. you. I don't I understand the question, bro. But listen, I have a broker. I have an account. And every day I trade. And when I get the money, I just cash in and it's on my account. And then I can transfer that money if I want to my bank account from Squirrel. I put it on my broker account and then I get paid. Or I, I switch it to crypto. I can get Basically, paid. The best thing is, is just show them using the measuring tool from the bottom to the top. There you right. Go. So he entered here. Then there's lots of those. And he took profit here. Yeah, guys, um, I have an account of 10 point something K and my, my um, lot size were like uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.7. So yeah, yeah, 70 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents. So the, the easiest way to put it is we do our setups on the computer and, and are on the screen and you trade on your phone off of MT4 or, I mean, you can trade on your computer, but that's how we run it. And we run the charts we make sure we have about four or five confirmations before we enter a trade like this, that pattern I just showed you guys. This is getting a little, a little um, in depth. I, I, I want to. No, it no, in depth is possible. what we. They, 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 we, 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 we want the show to be to be to be high level and in depth. Yeah. This, listen I, to I'm me, brother. To, you know. Listen to me. Okay. Let me explain. Second thing, guys. I only trade one thing. That's gold versus dollar. Why? Because that's what I'm learning to master. That's what I do. That's why mm -hmm. I don't trade crypto. I don't trade anything besides gold versus the dollar. It's high vo volatility. You can lose your money quick. But that's mm -hmm. why we train ourselves the dumbest and easiest way to set up our confirmation. And you can bag like me in 40 minutes, 480 pounds, just by entering the right timeline, the right confirmation, and the right setup. That's what we do. And that's the easiest way that we teach you guys in the School of Hard Knock System. And what he's trying to do now, is explain to guy, you guys how I got up in a, a setup just using supply and demand. But now we're going to teach you guys how we use um, the formation zones, like the confirmation zone from different patterns. Like now I'm seeing a W form. So, so W form, if you know what it's going to do, it's going to always do a reverse or it's going to go up depending on what's the supply and demand. So we have one supply and demand, resistance and support. Then we're going to check out the RSI. You guys know what's the RSI, right? Yeah, most, yeah. most people do, but let's go over it again for the beginners. Okay, that's a, a, a relative um, strength index in the market, how the money flows. It has to keep flowing like a heartbeat. So everything that goes up needs to come down. Everything that comes down needs to come up. That's how the patterns should be fucking always be in the demand and the supply zone. It's like a house. A house has a rooftop and it has a floor. So that's how the market moves. It always has to touch the, the, the floor or then needs to touch the, the, um, the roof. And if it breaks it, then the roof becomes a new floor. And then we need to make another roof. That's how it goes, guys. So by, by applying this easiest step, and then applying the, the indicators that we use, then we get those perfect setups like I can make in, in an in entry and make 480 pounds and, and I'm just chilling on with you guys and it hits my my um, my um, stop loss or it hits my take profit. And that's the whole what key of it. You, you, you say 480, but how, mu how much did you enter with? So I, just, I have an account of 10 point something K. I just made lot sizes of 30 cents, 40 cents and 70 cents. All those three trade um, um open trades made me four hundred and eighty dollars in forty minutes. Yeah. Okay. And how and like, do you make your stop loss when you're trading? And that's why we're teaching you guys right now by using these um, um confirmation zones: the supply and demand, the resistance What's and support. The risk reward ratio. How do you mean one to five hundred? I, I trade. Mm -hmm. No, it's all you always want one to 500. Okay, so this is the simplest way to explain it. You got exactly go out. Supply and demand. After this, let's go, let's go hard on them. Let's go on the on the on Fibonacci, how we take partial wow. street. Okay, okay. Let me just explain this really quick. You got supply and demand. This is this is support and okay. Supply and demand and support and resistance go hand in hand with each other. 
resistance is the is a roof and you have to have support for your house right so the bottom like this bottom right here this is support now what we do is we wait for the market to come back down if the market were to, were to come back down and and hit support again right here that's called a confirmation sorry that's a little so like let's say that it didn't come all the way back down and touch support so we didn't have that confirmation oh shit so guys, can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, on. yeah. come on, bro. I'm 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 rolling. Give me, come on, just just bear with me. Now, yeah, resistance yeah. is the same thing as as support, but it's the roof instead of the bottom. It's the top. So it hit resistance, came back down, which is an indicator that's gonna that it's gonna that it's gonna go back up. If that exactly. makes any sense. So if this would have hit support, it would have came back down. Since it hit resistance, it retested and the market shot straight back up. Exactly. And that's why we call it retest. But you need to trust your confirmation because that's the thing. People, when they see this thing moving um, to, um, against their setup, they tend to get out. And that's how you blow your account because you're going to take loss every day. In School of Art Knox, we're trying to make our profit eat our losses. Do you guys understand? And that's how you make profit every day. So when yeah, you're you stopping know. trade, you exit. And it, if you how do you exit if it breaks over the, that point of, of um, resistance? That's why you have your stop loss, bro. Stop loss, yeah. You want to show these guys how you use RSI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that right now. Let's let's keep keep going. Um, I'll be. All right, no, let's, let's, let me get my RSI on here really quick. RSI set up, and then let's go do the Fibonacci sequence. How do okay. we um, set up the things, how we take partial profit, and where do we put our stop loss and take profit? Got it. All right, boys, see this yellow line? It, see this yellow line in the purple box at the bottom? Yep, yep. Okay, so yeah. this this is the fifty. This is this RSI is basically uh, it, it's it's the it's a relative strength index. It's just another graph that you can use to to basically it mimics the charts, and you can use RSI as an indicator to not really predict the charts, but it it helps com confirming your trades. It's it's a little difficult, but it's I've used RSI. I love it. I love RSI. Um, it's instead of get having to do all these things that you're kind of cutting out, um, you know, you're cutting out a lot of uh, work, and you can use the RSI. If you if you notice this mountain right here, it mimicked the the chart. It did exactly what the chart did. Now. The way you use RSI is you've got the this fifty moving this uh, fifty moving average line, the yellow line. Above it is a sell, below it is a buy. So when the mark, when the this purple this purple line coming through here, making these mountains, when when the RSI is moving below the fifty, which is the yellow line, you're going to be in a sell. And you can see right here that we had a sell. All these red candles, boom, there it is. It's below the fifty. Now, now look over here. If we come back over here, it came above the 50. And there was the buy. Do you see how it's above the, the 50? You guys see it's like mimicking the chart, and that's how you do confirmation. You see, oh shit, it's gonna be a confirmation for a long buy or a long sell. And this is another confirmation indicator for us to be ready to get into a, a trade. All right. The third and probably one of my favorite setups we use is called the Fibonacci retracement. And what it does is it, it, it shows you where you take your profits and where to put your stop loss. So, Let's say we can I just say okay. people pay attention to what he's about to say because this is game. Just, what he's about to teach you here is worth like if you don't know about it, this is worth like 
a thousand pounds easy exactly and that's why you guys need to buy my program for 250 pounds only the membership and you get all this knowledge break broke down like like a bread for you so i'll be let's run it and um do it do it the most hardest way like i taught you brother all right all right so we're gonna pretend that this we're gonna we're gonna go back in time about a half hour before maestro entered that trade now, if I was ready, I, I wasn't ready yet, but let's say that I was in the market and I was, I was getting ready to, to do my setups. This is how I would do it. You're going to start your Fibonacci at the last engulfing candle. So do you see these red candles right here at the bottom? This little guy ended. This was the, the or, I'm sorry, the starting engulfing. So after the red, we saw our first green. This is where we start our Fib. Whether it's a buy or a sell, this is how you set it up. So if it was a buy, we would drag it up the chart like this. If it was a sell, we drag it down. But, but this is a buy. So I'm going to show you guys how it works in a buy. With the FIB, you have different levels, okay? You have your 0 0.764, your 0.5, and your 0 0.382. These are your levels. Um, uh, the, the, Basically, these are your indication levels. And what you do is you set up your fib just, just like this. So Maestro took his first profit. This is, this is what I would have done. I would have took my first profit. These first, see these three lines? You got one, two, and then the third one is spread a little bit. That's your bonus. If you hit this area, you're making money. This, is the, this would be your third take profit zone. So you've already made money on this first green line the second green line, and then the third is a bonus. So you set this up and you let the market play. It, it's, it's, the reason it's red down here is because you're, we're still in the red zone. We're not, in, we're not in take profit zone yet. This 0 0.382, this is our middle ground. Break the even. Second, this, right, break even. The second it passes the 0 0.3 or the, the 0 0.5 and it goes into to the 382, so we're taking we're profit, and then what we do is in the indication room in the group chat, I will tell these boys take partial profit, and mm -hmm. that's the first one. Let's set you you enter with a zero point three like me. You 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 narrow it down. You take you take some profit on the first signal, then you wait. You leave a little bit of the 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 enter zone that you enter with the trade, and then boom, we hit the second zone. I'll tell the boys again, take partial. That's the second partial you took profit away. So basically you already eat. So you don't got to be greedy, but we still have the confirmation zone that we, that we did. And there's a bonus zone. And that bonus zone will always leave a little bit, a little bit of the trade. So if we hit it, we hit it. If we don't, every time that we took partial, we move our SL, that's our stop loss. We move it to the last Up. zone that we took profit. That's the key, guys, because if you don't have your SL, if that shit goes down, you're fucked. You're wrecked. Sorry for my language. Excuse me. But like I said, boom. I love it. I love it. The, um, one the thing market I want to say to people, uh, sorry, sorry to cut you, uh, Maestro, but yeah. people that are watching that are invested in crypto for the long term, this strategy also works for long-term investing exactly. all you gotta do is everything from five minutes to the monthly and still take partials and still the, the key is with this game is if you're not taking profit then what are you doing you've got to make sure like we always say if you haven't got your exits planned you're gonna get wrecked you need to make sure that you have your exits in place you need to know what is the price that i'm gonna exit and i'm gonna take some profit not you don't have to take all but at least some so you can use this strategy like like he's showing right now you can see the monthly it's the exact same strategy you've got the, the supply zones you've got the demand zones you've got the supports you've got the resistances you can use the see great example here obviously this There's is with gold so it, it, it won't be as but it's a good you can still see that it works Okay, do you exactly. see how you, came can, you can apply this as a swing trader, you can apply as a day trader or scalpers. Um, in the school of art knocks, we're scalpers. We get in, we get out, we don't mess around and we don't 
We don't do this to build portfolio or build account. We do this to make money. Trying to do this as a passive income for the boys so they can actually start getting financial freedom and start investing in DeFi projects or cryptocurrency coins, NFT projects and all these things. That's the key of this uh, fundamental of trading. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving the toolbox with all these tools. And as you can see, this boy been doing this uh, for how long now, brother? Um, I'd say three, two and a half months, three months. Exactly. So imagine, exactly. two, imagine twice. two and a half months ago, he didn't know shit. He just took the uh, faith, the leap of faith, and came to me and asked me for help. And I told him, "Sure, bro, I'm gonna give you for free." And I've been teaching people for six months already, free. But now, like I said, the ones who was paying attention they'll be making money for free but now I, I made a subscription plan because we have a lot of people in the program now i cannot do this for free anymore it takes a lot of my time so yeah i made an nft collection so you can you buy know, um how you do the stop losses oh yeah yes. Run. yes all right let's get the fib back up okay so sorry guys one second okay so Let's say that you entered the trade down here at the bottom. You took your first profit, right? Your first, pro let's, okay, here, let me, give me one second, one second. All right, your first stop loss, your, or, when you enter the trade, your stop loss would be right here. Stop loss. About right here, okay? Just below where you entered now the market comes up you take your first profit at this spot right here this first green line boom you got profit you're going to move your stop loss gosh damn it dude sorry you guys my my siri keeps Fuck. i don't know how to respond to that <laughs> <Right here. laughs> okay. uh, I think it was his Alexa when I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> bro, don't worry yeah, about it, bro. We all guys, use technology. What? We're all used to it not working properly when we want it to work properly. So don't feel any pressure, bro. Like everyone on this call is used to having internet or Zoom or whatever not working the way you want it to when you want it to so no oh worries. boys i got two screens set up so like they're it's always switching on me it's so it's nuts so anyway okay so our, our stop loss was at the bottom we took our first profit what we do is we move our stop loss up to the first to the first take profit so now we've already taken our first take profit and we're just moving our stop loss up because we don't want our stop loss all the way down here if the market if we're way up here now it doesn't make any sense so let's say that like something happens and you're in the trade and you got to run, like you got to go help someone or you got to go to the bathroom or whatever. And you don't set a stop loss. You are going, this is what could happen. Boom. You come back to your phone and your computer and you're negative. You've lost all your money. You're, 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 it's, it's horrible. Stop loss is the most important thing in trading. It is. It's, it's happened to me a hundred times. Facts. I've heard, I've ruined myself without stop loss. And there's a, there's a really good video out there right now uh, on YouTube. All, if you guys join the, the school of hard knocks, WhatsApp, or you just join the school, you'll get all this info and you'll get all these videos. And we break down the videos with you. Like you go on, let's say you go, you go watch a YouTube video by yourself. You're, you're, you're just going to watch it. You're not really going to take anything from it. You might take notes, but it's like, when someone's there guiding you, pausing and saying, okay, this is what he means. This is what he's doing. I'm going to explain it. <laughs> Fucker, again, why are you telling them my way of teaching, guy? You're telling my secret, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get them intrigued. I want them to, I want them yeah, to feel yeah. comfortable. So, so, yeah, guys, look, look. I told you, this is the easiest and dumbest way I'm teaching these boys and it's working. So, I don't have thousands of videos out there, but I know people that have videos out there. So I'm using this platform, but breaking it down pieces by pieces so these people can understand. You see how he understood everything, the language? And that was my mission. I did my part. And now he's just 
blooming and doing his thing and making money every day. That's the whole point of this education system. Nice. Okay, I made okay, so um because of go ahead, brother. We're just gonna say because we've got it's like uh five two now. Is there anything you wanna say in closing comments or anything you want to show in, in closing comments before we go to questions? Yeah, I wanted to say one thing. Dude, I'm a surfer from South Orange County. I never thought in my entire life that I would be trading, running my own charts, doing my own setups, making profits. I've made money while I've taken a shower. I've made money while I've taken a, you know what? Um, I've made money surfing, shopping. Like, dude, it's insane, man. I, I'm, I'm literally blown away. And it's all thanks to my show, my coach, my mentor, my friend. It's not only a school, we're a family and we're a collective. We want to push you to, to hit your goals. And that's what we're about. But you have you can't have one foot in, one foot out. You got to be 100% committed. Love that, bro. That's Love it. Sick. Um, so, yeah, let's let's go to some questions because I know there's going to be questions uh, based on all of that. Uh, if you stop sharing your screen from there. Um, yeah, brother. But actually, Ninja, do you want to go quickly show the, the Lunar play? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you very much, bro. That was amazing. You did a great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Shouts my very gold great. traders. Shouts my commodities great. traders. Um, I do want to jump in and give it a go in good time. Um, everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, bro, you're good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, let me just show you uh, a recent Luna trade, and I'm still holding the. Again, this is not financial advice, <laughs> but this might be <laughs> one of the trades of the year. <laughs> so, uh, let's go to the two-minute time frame. Now, notice how even to be able to view this chart. You literally got to put in a little bit of work to just zoom in. Like the zoom yeah. in grind. Zoom right, in so grind. let's have a look at price action. So notice how the whole media, in fact, let me just state something that I hate in crypto culture. I hate it when people create this like jokey content, create this like, what do you call it? This kind of crypto content. It just pushes fear all the time. All I see on crypto social media right now is how everyone's talking about how if you invested a million dollars in Luna last week, it's going to be $3. That's where the opportunity is, man. That's where the opportunity is. Okay, let me just get it to maybe 15 minutes. Okay. So... As we can see, RSI, when Luna crashed on the 13th of May, I entered on, when did I make this trade? It was Friday. So it was the 13th. So I didn't buy it on the 12th because I wanted to wait for, um, I, I wanted for the mate, I wanted to feel out the bottom. So I entered this trade on around midday on the, oh, on the 14th, one second. What's going on my screen right now? There we are. Okay. What? Okay, we're here. All right, so midday on the Friday, which was the 13th. So on the 13th, around midday, one second, let's, let's zoom in, let's zoom in. Mm -mm -mm. You can close the DMI. Shouts, Keish, for telling us about the DMI. Yeah. Let me tear that down. 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 Tear that down. Uh, so 13th of May, midday. So feel that fell out of the bottom around midday, around 12:30. And on on that actual day, this is why. For those that don't know, the measuring tool is pretty much the most important tool in the whole of um, in the whole of trading view, right? Because it shows you the percentage upside and the percent percentage drawdown. Always measure things in percentage upside and drawdown. In 12 hours, we saw we saw an 11x. 
Um, I cashed out. I, I cashed out most of the position at five x, um, and then the position that I left in here proceeded to do five uh, x. Remember, four hundred. Remember, one hundred percent is two x. Four hundred percent is five x. Um, where we're currently at in Luna, not financial advice to get into it. Um, from the current. Sorry, the, the current price to recent all-time highs, recent all-time highs being only two days ago, is nearly uh, is nearly three x down. So right now is a potential entry point. Um, with regards to these kind of investments, basically an investment where an asset absolutely plummets, but has the potential to rise back. Um, for example, the team is still there, the structure is still there, the employees are still there. It's just that some um, some messed up stuff happened in the people um, in in the in the people higher up, right? It's just that one point three billion Bitcoin is not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is with with these kind of trades, in my opinion, there's not much TA to be done. I'll I'll let I'll let, I'll let Mr. Hardin give a second opinion, but these kind of trades, I would go as far to say I would compare them to along the lines of maybe a little bit of degen, a little bit of meme coiny. Um, obviously, it is Luna. It is not a meme coin. Let's, let me just show you some potential upside of... Where I would say the TA comes in is the RSI. Look how in the dirt the RSI is. Mm -hmm. So if you go to... Let's get, let's get back to the RSI. RSI back up. Yeah. Yeah, boy, it's all... It, the trading that whoa, I just... Whoa, 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 whoa. What whoa, is going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, but it pertains to every market. It doesn't have to just be gold. It, it pertains to everything. Year over dollar, all the cryptos. Keep going. Yep. That's a chance. So you can see how in the dirt it was over there, showing that it's pretty much a bottom. Boy. So that's what you look. If you're going to do this kind of thing, you need to see that. And then you need to see it's starting to move up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was this was around the time that I entered on the thirteenth of May, between between midday and and two p.m. So as you can see, the RSI it just bottomed out for so long. I saw I saw the I saw the entry opportunity around this time. I think if you break this down to maybe five minutes, uh, let's see what it was saying during those times. Let me backtrack. 13th of May, around midday. The RSI is nice. Actually, you can see around this time in the in the, in the uh, five minutes it started moving up. I jumped in on that while I was on NFT Fridays, and five, yeah, I remember five X the next day. Yeah, Keith jumped in, literally let's say 8:30 p.m. in the middle of NFT Fridays, and then we saw we saw nine X. And I hit about a five on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just took, took cross left drips. So, so, so. Yeah, again, this is not financial advice, but if you've got some money that you are willing to lose. <laughs> I didn't put a big amount. I put a very, very minuscule amount that I don't give a damn about. Of, of your portfolio, what percentage would you say you invested in? 0.01%. Around there. the same. Around the same. Yeah. So, guys, um, this has been amazing. Let's go to some questions because it's 9.30. Ninja, you might as well come back over here now. For sure. Um, and then if you... Let's do it so that the mic can go on this one. Yeah, slap it on now for team. We're getting an echo, boys. Boom. There we go. What's up, you guys? There we go. Right, let's fire away with some questions. Let's keep going. I know someone must have a question. I'm talking to people. Oh, 
had picked on, left off with picking on Jamea. You guys are very quiet, eh? Are we in? Are we quiet? How far are we quiet? Oh, you guys can hear us through. Is it mad, mad far? Yo, that's better, bro. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, let's pick on Janine. Couple questions. Next. Next. Okay. AJ. Some questions for AJ. Five, four, three, two, one. Next. Let's go, Josh. Hey, guys. Can you guys hear me? I am on Bethnal Green Road going home. Oh, you're right. Rockland. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just going back home. I'm just, I was just in the gym listening to you guys. Um, when you guys started talking about Forex, you gave me uh, very good memories. Um, I had a little horror story where I was like, I was like, I was like, it was positive 1,300 on a trade. I and mean, I went into a meeting and I did do a stop loss. I think oh. I did like four the same trade like four times. I think I lost the whole the whole trade. The whole trade. I've been there, brother. I've been there. <laughs> so yeah, don't mess with stop losses and like even using like moving stop losses, like you like that move and jump and they they, they like chase your take profit. Honestly, just just use it. But yes. Um, I will be back to these calls and I will be back to this, but every oh, market, bro. so is far more. And you're <laughs> so a guy that traded good. like that, bro. Best trader, man. He's got an incredible brain, but he'd never use a stop loss. I kept on telling him, bro, he'd be up 2K, 3K plus. Yeah, man, if you just, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be, I know, it's gonna, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. No, stop being greedy. Are you stupid, bro? It's, great. it's honestly, it's psychology. Like, I got a little quarter, that half of that something. Yeah. So when you, at least you know you never lost. Yeah, trading trading psychology is honestly the most powerful skill because making a one pound two thousand times is two thousand pounds, but losing a bag in one trade. <laughs> there you go. That's hey. it. a stressful time. No, so I take, this more, take this more. We all we all go through these things. And and I, I think it's important to iterate. This doesn't apply to just forex and trading against yes, everything. That everything. It applies everything. to all investments, all, all trades, all markets, especially like yeah. we are expecting a big pump on potentially at some point this year on, on and if you haven't got your take profit and stop and the trading stop happening on your crypto yeah. and it goes up to fucking you get a 10x and then you, you don't have a trading stop or you don't have a stop or a take profit and then it comes crashing yeah. down you're going to be pissed you will be you will be so yeah I would, I would say listen to these guys um, understand where to put your take profits and stop losses because anytime I ask for advice like even the altcoins like the number the top 10 altcoins I spoke to Ninja and Harden about where I should put my stop losses where I should put my take profits because anything can mess up anything can mess oh. up so Anything Josh is so much my boy that I pulled up to his office in Central London to yeah. to, to to set to set the swing trades. Yeah, and then I, <laughs> and then I fed him. We do we do, we, do rest, we have a restaurant on top. We even fed him honestly every single time. But yeah, I thank you guys every single time. And I know I'm not spoken to Harden to do like financial shit, but I'm back. I'll be back. But Jeez, farmer market. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, listen, bro. Mondays from 7 p.m. onwards, um, the our, our office is open to the public, so you can do the game in person. Ooh, that to... sounds appetizing. That's that how you get the real game. Yeah, the yeah, real that's game. where the real game listen, happens. Listen, listen, <laughs> the real game, pull yeah. the real life, because you can get pre-game you get some and post-game. Crazy game. So, okay. yeah, y'all be if, I can never, if I can never get some time away, the farmer market, I, I'm, I actually need to talk to Harden, but um, the farmer market is also very busy. 
So my life is busy in general, but yeah, everything is crazy. I like crazy. the sound of that, bro. I like the sound of that. We'll, we will talk. Is crazy. <laughs> I will talk to you. I will talk to you, but yeah. <laughs> it's all busy. It's all busy, okay? Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. But yes, very useful. Um, no questions. Um, I think I just need to just learn more about actually analyzing charts a bit more. Bro, anytime you have like, a question, just ask us, bro. You can contact Michael, contact us, brother. No problem. Thank you, man. I love it. Thank you, guys. Love, love, Thank love. You, bro. love. love. Uh, Muddy Toes, before your battery dies, do you want to shoot off your question? Yo, I really don't have a question, you know. <laughs> Didn't you have some bars that you dropped on um, TikTok? I did, yeah, I did. That was earlier today. Go on, do you want to drop those bars again? Because they were fire. I didn't hear them. Do I even remember those bars, bro? I wrote them down in like five minutes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, we'll, we'll plug it in the group later. We'll, we'll share it in the group again so everybody knows. Because your bars yeah. were fine. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, that would be dope, man. For sure. No, man, no. Like, you, you just put... Everyone was trying to put a, a, a downer. Like, I don't know why these girls were trying to put a downer on guys that invest in crypto. I'm like, yeah. you ain't complaining when he's up, though. Trust me. Wow. You know what, bro? When I saw it, I was like, this is like a psychological attack. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like a man, a man's thinking, oh, he's gonna lose his woman if he if he invests in crypto or something like that. Like Bro, if your woman is saying she's gonna leave you because you're investing in oh, assets. She's not the Adios. One. She doesn't support the blockchain, she's not the one voice. <laughs> let her go. Your man isn't interested in the blockchain. He's not the one either. Amen. Amen. Get yourself, Amen. get yourself a man, ladies, who's into the blockchain. <laughs> Thanks. Amen. In fact, you want it to be a uh, shout out, my wifey. Um, you want it to be where your missus or your partner is finding plugs that you're not finding. So some of our big, some of my relationships, some of my biggest returns in our portfolio, my girl found. She found Kaiba. Like. That's hers. Like, so that's what you want is a partner that you can discuss this stuff with in detail. A partner that's going to counter your ideas that you're going to be like, yeah, I'm seeing this on the charts. And then she'll go, no. Or you're looking, you're saying, yeah, these are my fundamentals. And then she goes, well, what about this? Have you thought about this though? And you're like, oh, snap. I'm, That's what you want. There you go, bro. I'm like, my portfolio is looking like this. What's your saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get me. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's true. It's I mean, true. all of these, you know what? You're a dose, so it's calm. <laughs> yeah, bro. Money toes, love. Yes. Peace, guys. Much love, Best man. Have a good day. Bless. 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 Someone else had a, a question on here, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, Rosita, I think you had a question. Yes, hi. Uh, I was just wondering, based on the portfolio that the gentleman was speaking about just now, and the one that you said about 1% of your portfolio, you have that particular coin. Which coin was that? 0.01% of. of his portfolio. Yeah, 0.01. Was in Luna. And he made the trade and made 5x of it. Let me be honest. Let me be honest, Queen. If you don't know how to use a decentralized exchange, it's not for you. Don't don't do it. Nobody do the Luna trade if you can't, if you don't know not how to. Right. Which one was that? Like exchange and a decentralized wallet. If you don't know what that means, don't make the trade. Don't. Yeah, you're not ready. If, if you don't use the Dex. Yeah, like like we said at the start of this this episode, teach you that. some of the things we're going to discuss in this web episode are not for everybody. Yes. Like at all. Like some of these things that we discussed in this episode will ruin your whole investment portfolio and put you off investing and trading for the rest of your life. We do not want that in any shape, way or form. And some of the things that we mentioned are things that you should actually go to a financial advisor about first, then let them say, all right, cool. You can play around with this amount of money, then come back to this and, and go, all right, cool. Let, let me put this in this high risk asset. So I hope that answers that question. I think you've frozen, by the way. Um, Christine had a question. Uh, what was it in the chat? Is that Bam? 
Uh, yeah, it's... What's up? What's up? What's up? That would Hello. be ideal. Oh, you're talking about? Oh, it's not a question. Did you have any questions? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so you guys actually have an office in Canary Wolf now. Yeah. Yeah. Can I come visit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> working space with oh. our lovely, lovely host, the DLT Lounge. Behind us. Yeah. This is this is a specific crypto web free incubator. Nobody here isn't in the blockchain. DLT Lounge. Blockchain exclusive. DLT Lounge. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And there's networking events every. Is it every Thursday? Every bi weekly, I believe. Yeah, bi weekly. Um, are, are, you, are you London based? Are you interested in coming IRL? Me? Yeah, are you back in China or are you here? Oh, I'm in London. Oh, yeah, you need to pull up then. Hello. I'm in London. You know. Yeah, I'm open yeah. to the Um, So this Thursday. Yeah, I need on to Thursday. I need, to, like, I need uh, to learn more from you guys for sure. Okay, cool. So on Thursdays, it's just like a general networking event. Then on Mondays is when we're doing the game like this. Um, and then we're going to start opening it up to being a live audience where people can come in person and ask questions oh. in person. And then we can show you things in more detail. Yeah. Ah, sounds good. Sounds good. I'll probably see you guys next Monday then. Perfect. Um, bring no friends. Bring, bring friends. friends. Bring, like, literally, I'm putting it out there. Yeah. This is this is this is only second week of the office. So we only we only got the we only got, got the place. We show them the bar. I did, show, I already did, you know. Show the bar. Let's show them again. Show, show the bar. Show the open bar. Look. Flip the camera. Oh, my God. What? Oh, nice. Yeah. No non-calling options also open. Wait, wait, wait. We're, we're plugging the DLT. This is the main man. This is the main man. What's good? Hey, guys. How hey. you doing? Hey. Do you want to say something about the, about the DLT? Uh, the DLT was started for the Web3 family who's trying to promote the movement. And we're looking for passionate uh, innovators uh, like the blockchain sensei. We've got other teams moving in where it's, it's happening. We're hopefully one of many to pop up, but uh, we'd love to see you all here. That's it, man. Thank you very much, brother. Sure. Love, love, love. Okay, let's go to the next question. Who we got? Um, Deco, you got a question? Deco, Discord manager. Deco, Deco. Oh, you all can hear me, Discord. yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. I, I thought my mic was muddled on the headset, but apparently not. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, no. I uh, don't have any questions as such. Just wondering uh, what's the links for the stuff that was mentioned in the uh, trading stuff before. We're going to get that link sorted out. Um, oh, so okay. We've got to just source them out with Maestro. <clears throat> We're going to get a link that we can send to everybody. Um, and then we'll right, go. Cool, cool, cool. Well, that's, that's fine. Perfect, perfect. And um, then in terms of next question, uh, let's go to Vish. Vish, are you there? Hello. What's up, Vish? How you doing? Hello. All good, all good. Do you have any questions? Uh, what's happened here? Oh, your audio is a bit quiet. Vish, if you've got a question, type it in the chat and then that way we can, we can answer your question. Is there anything in the chat? No. Oh, his mic can't work. Yeah, Vish, if you type something in the chat, then we can answer your question. Okay, let's go to the next question. So next one, who haven't heard from? Man likes to sorry. You say, Mr. Frost. Oh, Caribbean Donny, locking in. Yo, yo, yo. Um, so, um, I don't know if. Well, I'm just saying what's on what's on uh, top of my head. So uh, I've been out of the game uh, because I've been tapped into trying to get some uh, client projects done on this side. Uh, mm -hmm. But like. I've been seeing a chat moving. I've been hearing murmurs and I finally got a chance to tap in and see there's been blood spill everywhere. Uh, Dots <laughs> gone down, Luna got murked. Like, I don't even know where to start. Like, I feel like I jumped into a war zone. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I, did, I didn't have any Luna. Um, I did have some of the other um, uh, crypto assets that went down. Uh, but 
Wait, wait, is, can I, can I, I know. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I ask you, when Luna crashed, did your brain think of the opportunity to buy that dip? Did it occur to I mean, you? <laughs> I mean, anything that goes down is a good opportunity to buy a dip. But um, also, I, I, a friend of mine, when I spoke to them uh, as it was their, their birthday the other day, um, it was all they were talking about. It was their birthday. And instead, they're talking about crypto. I'm like, shit, like, you're deep in the game. But, yeah. um, like, they, they, they mentioned something. I'm like, so uh, it was uh, people's money getting locked up. Um, on, mm-hmm. on the exchange and not having access to it mm-hmm. um yeah <laughs> so and then it goes back to what you've always been saying uh, both you and um uh, uh ninja and, and harding about if if it's on the blockchain um if it's on the exchange and it's not in your own ledger then sh- it's not your crypto you're you're gonna get screwed um yep. so yeah like i know for the first part of uh, the first quarter, there was a lot of volatility happening. A lot of stuff was shifting. Um, and not going to lie, I haven't got a chance to read that major report uh, that, that you guys released as well. But I know for a fact it's very critical um, to maybe a lot of stuff that's happening now. Um, mm-hmm. But like, is this craziness going to carry on till the end of summer? I know like... A lot of volatility means that, you know, there should be some great opportunities, but like, this is, this, this is going to be going on for a while though, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to go one of two ways. So uh, let me see if I can pull up um, the Twitter. Let me pull up the Twitter and I'll show you what I I drew out. What the two options are. Yeah, Marco's going to pull it up. But another thing to look at is our World Cycle uh, video as well, which uh, covers what Ray Dalio was speaking about in terms of the cycles of how the world and the markets run and also the world reserve currencies and things like that. So that'll be a good one to check out if you want to understand okay. sort of what we're can in Can you now. tell me that again? Uh, world Cycle, or can you type it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll send you the link. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. All right, cool. So, yeah, got Mike. Okay, cool. So, first of all, what we've got to look at is we've got to actually understand what's going on in the alt market as well as the crypto market. Now, what's happening at the moment is everyone's just focused on Bitcoin. That's all everyone's focused on. Whereas the gains are not to be made in Bitcoin. Just do the simple maths. Like when you look at Bitcoin and you look at the return, this is what we've been saying since October. Since October, November, we've been telling people, get out of Bitcoin, get out of ETH. But no, not many people have been listening. Most people have just been buying, 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 buying under this illusion that Bitcoin was going to get to 100K. But what they haven't taken into this consideration is the market cap of Bitcoin at that time. If you do the simple maths, at that time when Bitcoin was 50, 70K, the market cap was around a trillion dollars. That means for it to go to 100K, it would have needed another trillion dollars. That would need the money printer to go brr again. And it wasn't going to go brr again because it would destroy America. America was already destroyed, so sorry, it sorry, couldn't yeah. do that what, 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 again. What, unless that would be no, suicide for America. What did that money? What, what did, what did, what did that money, money, money printer money need to go? Brrr. Jay Powell needed to get on that money printer and go absolutely yeah. schwammy, but he couldn't do that again. His clip was empty. Right. So let me just break this down. What happened? So a lot of people are looking at Bitcoin, and here we saw again. You were saying this all last year. The ultimate support line in Bitcoin is this 28K price. This 28K price, so we knew what's going to happen. If, if everyone's, if the bull market started in October, November, we had from October, November, all the way up until it got to this 28K mark to start filling up our altcoin bags. And the prices of the altcoins would get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Then what would happen is we would have a shock breakout. So just like what we had, what the guys explained earlier about the supply zones, 
and the supports and resistances, you can see this little tick that happened just below um, here before, as well. And again, note that when it comes to looking at Bitcoin, what time frame I'm using? I'm using the weekly time frame. Why? Because nobody uses the weekly time frame. Guess who uses the weekly time frame? Big institutions. Why? Because they're dealing with big money. So you've got to start thinking, I'm big money. I'm going to look at my money as if I've got billions in the market. So you're going to look at these time frames. So let's now go on to total free, which is the all the altcoins exclude, basically the markets excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, what was the tool that we mentioned earlier? And is the RSI. Let's look at where the RSI is right now in the altcoin market. It is in the ground. Look at it. Look how low it is. And Kowinky Dinky, look at this support area that's just here. What do we expect to happen? A bounce off it. Or maybe, um, what did we get? Oh, yeah, a bounce off it. So what's likely to happen? Potentially one of two things. Let me just draw <laughs> out what potentially might happen. From this bounce, for maximum psychological trauma, it would go up like this and then come down and go below this area. And if it went below this area, everyone would panic like, like it's the end of the world. Crypto's a scam. Crypto's a scam. It's a scam again. But then from there, what would it do is it would just cause absolute psychological trauma playing around with this, this line here like this. People would just be in absolute turmoil. And then, like it always does, in a maximum two-week to six-week window, would go like this. And then guess what would happen? Everyone would buy in just here, just at this top, as soon as the market cap got to around $1 trillion. And then guess what would happen then? It would shoot even lower, and then it would go cause even more psychological trauma. and wouldn't even go here. It would go here. And what would happen? That would mean people would have bought the, uh, missed the bottom, got wrecked trying to buy the bottom, bought the top, got wrecked trying to buy the top, and then got smashed into hell. Now, if you had stop losses, you would have been fine. If you had take profits, you would have been fine. But this is what I think potentially could happen. And with these exact time frames, I, th I think. Very likely, we're going to see some kind of spike after one more dip below this area. It might not happen, but that's the potential play that talking to a lot of whales and you, we, we've got to remember, people have got billions of dollars locked up here. Now, how do they get rid of that bill those billions of dollars? We have to remember... These institutions, these VCs don't buy when we buy. They get it at pre-sale. So that means they're not even getting it at these prices. They're getting it when it's like not even on the, on the chart before it's even printed. So they're making profit. Guess where? In the bit when it gets listed. So the moment it's listed, they've already made profit. So this bit here, all the way up here, these guys are out. Just to, uh, the same thing happened with Coinbase IPO as well. These guys are just trying to give their crumbs now. They're just trying to get out of their crumbs. So where we are right now, potentially, depending on how much the VCs have got locked up in, in these cryptos, they're going to want some exit liquidity. What is exit liquidity? Retail buying into things that they don't understand. Now, what is the one thing that we know the VCs have done over the last two years? Buy absolute crap by absolute shit stocks they've been buying companies asset management companies have been buying companies that have got poor revenue companies that aren't making a profit and the same thing in the crypto space they've been putting money into projects that aren't even released yet they've been putting money into things that are just a pitch deck and how do we know that because we're literally talking to VCs and we're seeing it happen Fact. we're seeing projects come to us asking for consultation, asking for help, when all they've had is a pitch deck. They got 20 million two years ago, and now they've got 2 million left. And they're like, oh, what can we do? And you were like, have you done any marketing? Uh, now nah, we just did some tweets. 
or we did some Facebook ads. And it's like, this is everything that's wrong with the space is that, unfortunately, it's been uh, the technology in the crypto space has been abused and people are only interested in money and not with technology. Whereas what's happening now from some of the conversations we're having with some big VCs and some big um, crypto platforms, they're only looking for utility. If it hasn't got utility, they're not interested. So what does that mean? That means they're now starting a new accumulation phase based on quality, revenue-making projects. If your project isn't... Basically, crypto was in a phase where your, your crypto business model didn't actually have to be a business. It didn't actually have to make revenue. Whereas now, the only projects that are going to get funding are things where you can explain to your VC, this is how my crypto makes money. This is the intrinsic value. Just like with Ethereum, it makes money. Why? Because they can sell domains. So the moment you can sell domains, you've got websites. The moment you can give space for people to create apps, guess what? An app can generate money. Therefore, it's a revenue-making project. If it's not a revenue-making project and it's just some shit, <laughs> then it's not going to work. So I hope, I hope that answers your question, Sasori. I hope that gives some detail to what could happen. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope that's, that's option one. Option two, let me just draw this out. What could happen? Is that let me show you on on Bitcoin because as we know, Bitcoin follows the uh, markets. We'll come up like this. We'll bounce off here. We'll come up like this. We'll get up to like 50k. Everyone will think it's going up to 75 again. We'll come down, and then from there, we'll dip just below 28, and then from there, we'll tease it. And then it will come down to like 10K, like that. So that's option two. Option three, let me give you all the potential plays, is that straight from here, we go up to here just a little bit and then just go sideways like this, like I was saying. So the better option is that we just go sideways because it gives you a longer time to dollar cost average into it. But that's very unlikely. Um, what is more likely is that we get this exit pump super crash because that would be in line with the Great Depression theory that Ray Dalio is suggesting and that everyone's suggesting and it would make sense of all the fundamental stuff that we're seeing. And then the CBDCs will be introduced and then we will have a new king. Say no more. So, yeah, hope that answers that. There you go. That's it right there. I'm meeting my computer. So sorry, did that help? Did it help? How was that? Oh. Hello? What's going on, you guys? Yeah, that? what's good, man? We're there. Yeah, I was saying, so sorry, did that help? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was typing. Um, but yeah, uh, it helped. You gave me uh, some answers early on in that question, but then also, you know, had all that extra stuff uh, added on. So that was all good to see. <laughs> you know me, I can't help myself. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, man, I think I think that's... Um, oh, you, the echo and signal was a bit bad. Yeah, sorry, um, man. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. It's now 930 answered everybody's questions thank you very much uh albert thank you very much maestro uh thank you very much school of hard knocks uh, it's been an amazing episode of the game love you all thank you for your appreciation please like share comment on instagram please go into the youtube and drop game if you've learned anything from today's episode or taken any game or any value it really helps the algorithm thank you very much guys love 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 Cheers. also coming very soon is an episode with civitas an episode with Man, Debs, uh, Goldman Sachs trainer, who was managing over four billion, um, and much, much more. Ten. Ten. See you later, guys. Wow. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Peace out. Thank you.